First of all, a few announcements. In our world in Hong Kong, we know we are one of the world's most wired societies and we love our mobile phones, but would you please make sure that you don't love them enough this morning to leave them on? Please put your mobile phones on silent mode, otherwise we will have to incur the penalty. The penalty for mobile phones going off this morning is whoever's mobile phone goes off has to do a dance. <laughs> that normally ensures complete silence. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Um, I am Peter Upton. I'm the British Council's Director for South China, and it's my pleasure to host this first session. Can I, on your behalf, welcome Michelle Lee, Deputy Secretary for Education from the EDB, uh, Anthony Wu from the HANA Foundation, Professor C.F. Lee from Hong Kong U, Geoffrey Crossock, um, Vice Chancellor, University of London, John Hawkins, known as the godfather of the creative economy, and of course, Winnie Ng. Um, we've got a really spectacular lineup today and it's my pleasure to start off this. So a warm welcome to the session on the Creative Economy Conference, which is jointly organized by the Bohana Foundation Research Center, the British Council, Hong Kong U School of Professional and Continuing Education. And I get to make some opening remarks. The creative industries are, of course, the silent engines of economic growth, social cohesion, and innovation. And that's a reality that is consistently overlooked by the media and sometimes by government. The reality is the creative industries generate prosperity, employment, and long-term growth. Economies and governments tend to focus on science and technology as the real economy, the main generator of wealth, the main generator of employment and innovation. And if only governments would spend more money on science, more money on technology, all would be well. Don't get me wrong, I like science. I think it's vital for economic development, but it needs to be balanced by an understanding and the centrality of the creative industries and creativity. Creativity is not just the arts. In the UK, the creative industries employ more than one million people, far more than life sciences, far more than the financial services. There are over 800,000 people employed in the creative occupations, accounting for 7% of GDP. What's also interesting is that the non-creative industry sectors brought 55% of those creative products. And across the EU, the creative industries account for only 2.6%. The influence, the reputational capital of this to the UK is immense. It makes the UK a world leader in the creative sector. And the future of our economy in the UK, in Hong Kong, in, Hong Kong, in South China, is not going to be shaped by cheap labor or low skills, but by knowledge, imagination, and ideas. All of these things are nurtured by government, they need to be nurtured by higher education, and they need to be supported and welcomed by ours. A creative economy needs a vibrant arts and cultural sector. The creative industries are also high skills. 67% of occupations filled by graduates and in some sectors, the interactive media sector, for example, has 80% graduate employment. What's interesting about the creative industries and creativity is they differ from the standard business model. They're often micro, small, network, highly flexible, with people having portfolio working. Interestingly, of course, this is a business model that most large businesses seek to replicate and haven't been able to do so but it's one that the creative sector has been doing for the last 20 years. One of the key drivers within this creative industry sector has been the quest for innovation, where innovation and design drives technology. In the film Avatar, it was the creative force that drove the technology, and Steve Jobs would say of Apple, it's the imagination that drives the technology. In Hong Kong, ever since the 2007 report, there's been a creative debate about the future of Hong Kong as a creative metropolis. The debate concerns whether Hong Kong is really concerned with the hardware, the infrastructure of venues such as West Kowloon, or is it concerned with the software of people and creativity? And of course, we know the reality is that it's both. We need to see a diversity of routes to nurture creative talent. 
to create institutional thickness for creativity. This means supporting interdisciplinary studies at university, promoting creative industries, and avoiding perhaps the trap of league tables and quick wins. The arts and the creative industries speak a universal language that knows no borders, knows no bounders, and as we witness global trends in fashion, design, culture, and creativity become important. Removed as they are from the tyranny of geography, they have a global response to a global need. But this in turn demands very special skills from you, from you as creative leaders and from our own colleagues in this area. We're delighted to be hosting this tripartite conversation with our friends from Hong Kong U and the Bahana Foundation. And this importance of collaboration on the creative economy is one that affects us all. I'd like now to invite Mr. Anthony Wu, Chairman of the Bahauna Foundation Research Center, on stage to give his welcoming remarks. Mr. Anthony Wu. <clears throat> welcome, a very warm welcome to the Creative Economy Forum organized by the Bohemia Foundation, the British Council, and the Hong Kong University space. Building a, a creative economy is a very important subject. It is a subject that is very close to our heart. We at the Bohemia released a research report in 2007 on Hong Kong as a creative, economy, creative metropolis, highlighting the strategic value and importance of creativity and innovation in our economic activities, as well as our social and cultural developments. I must say that many of our recommendations of the report are still valid and relevant to today's discussion. Creativity is important as it has much to do with Hong Kong's competitiveness locally, regionally, and globally. For the business sector, they need a paradigm shift in the way they do business and the way they plan their businesses. For government, public bodies, and NGOs, they also need creativity and innovation to bring about service enhancement and social changes given the constraints of limited resources. But to meet the challenges and opportunities presented by the creative economy, we need talents with creative mindsets and skill sets. This will call for a critical examination of our academic, social, and cultural values. We need more cross-sector collaborations among industries, creative workers, and universities. We also need to look at reforms that are essential to our curriculum at both the school and university levels. Today's forum provides an excellent platform for us to reflect on these important issues in the light of the UK experience. As you will know from the program, we are indeed very honored to have such a great lineup of top-notch speakers, John Hawkins, Professor Jeffrey Krosick, Professor Anthony Jung, and Professor Edmund Coe. They will be joined by leading figures from the business, academic, and public sectors in Hong Kong and the UK. Ladies and gentlemen, I very much look forward to a highly interactive and thought-provocative forum today. Thank you. Thank you very much, Anthony. Can we hear now from Professor C.F. Lee, Director of the Hong Kong University School of Professional and Continuing Education. Professor Lee. Mr. Wu, Ms. Dob Zhuang, Michelle, Professor Krosek, Professor Xiong, Professor Edmund Cole, and uh, Mr. Hawkins, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. May I add my welcome uh, to the conference. Welcome as well as the weather outside there. The uh, topic, uh, creating prosperity, uh, through the development of a creative economy is the topic uh, of extreme importance uh, to us uh, in Hong Kong and this part of the world. Approximately a couple of weeks ago, I was uh, in Northeast uh, Asia um, in a province called Daoling province. Daoling used to be a uh, um, province rich in natural resources, particularly coal, coal mine, lots of coal mine, open pit coal mine. 
uh, Fuxin. And uh, Fuxin and all these are very large uh, open pit coal mine. But the fact is, you know, the uh, coal resources uh, drying up, no more coal to, to mine. So you, you're left with a population uh, to take care of. Uh, you know, they, they were looking at the various uh, types of options. Um, I, I look after a, a group that uh, explored the possibility of turning the large open pit mine into a pump storage uh, generating station. In other words, you, you make use of uh, the uh, pit, the open pit as a lower reservoir and then you somehow build a, an upper reservoir uh, high up in the mountains and then, you know, during the daytime when you need electricity, you let the water run down and then you generate electricity. In the evening, when uh, people no longer need as much electricity, then you use uh, wind turbines to pump the water back up into the hill. So that's uh, the way they, um, you know, turn the place into a, a, an en energy base. Uh, and uh, people there are extremely interested in the UK experience in Newcastle, and you know, you have similar kind of problem. You, you, uh, you, uh, you exhaust your, your, your coal, and then uh, you uh, turn it into a very successful uh, creative economy. So there's much we can learn from uh, the UK in that uh, perspective. Closer to home at Hong Kong, we used to have uh, a lot of manufacturing industry. I guess you all agree that's no longer the case. 90% uh, plus of our economy today is uh, service uh, industry based type of economy. Uh, so we are also in this uh, transition to, to uh, a successful uh, uh, service uh, economy. In that sense, uh, we need to nurture uh, new talents, people who can provide top notch uh, service, be it accounting, law, logistic, uh, estate management, and all these uh, 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 service industry of one form or the other. And uh, we need to learn from other people's experience in developing our creative economy. So in that sense, uh, our conference uh, here today, along with the uh, uh, workshop in the afternoon uh, in creating prosperity, uh, you know, the fluid talent development and cross-sector collaboration is a very topical, very important uh, subject for Hong Kong and for the future of the Hong Kong e economy, for sure. So uh, in that sense, uh, we are extremely pleased to be able to be part of the conference. And uh, we uh, uh, welcome our distinguished uh, speakers from overseas and uh, would wish everybody a very rewarding day today at this conference. Thank you. Right. Uh, we now come to the important group photograph moment. So if you please bear with us, um, can I invite please, of course, Mr. Anthony Wu on stage, Professor C.F. Lee, please join us on stage. Can I invite Ms. Michelle Lee to join us on stage, Winnie Ernst to join us on stage, Jeff Krosick, and John Halkins. Would you please join us on stage for the group photograph?